I tell you, my life is a reality TV show. Just went to a pub to order the signature drunken mac and cheese. I've delivered it with DoorDash before. Really wanted to try it. That's the only reason why I went there. I order a drink and they come out telling me they ran out of beer cheese. So I left and instead I made an emergency order of Domino's pizza of which they accidentally made it into a medium instead of a small. So now I have lots of food that I have to put in my stomach. Aren't those some funky looking Oreos? They're cosmic. They're made with Pop Rock candy. Let's give it a go. This is a Jesse exclusive reaction video. Roll it. I haven't had Pop Rocks in so long, I forgot that feeling. Oh my god, this is so weird. You only notice the popping when you stop chewing. <laughs> Tastes good though. Not the Oreo flavor, slightly different. I can't pin it though, but it's good. Limited edition, I don't have the package with me, but it's one of the small packages, little square ones. Very limited indeed. I used to have an Uber Adventures series. Here's what it looked like. The young boy that, yeah, he's he's in rough shape. So, oh. Oh my God. but now we've got DoorDash series. Hopefully, I don't have to DoorDash too much longer. But today on DoorDash Adventures, rock up to McDonald's for an order. Everyone's standing outside. The fire alarm went off. So I'm just gonna chill out here till it's all over. Probably about five minutes until reset the smoke detector. Yep, every day is different. I was just holding this loaf of bread in my hand for this DoorDash order and I felt something weird. The last section of it is stuck here in the top, right where the twist tag goes around. <laughs> it's just sticking out the top there. just watching a Doug Demiro YouTube video. He was doing a Mini Cooper. Definitely seemed like the first Mini he's ever done because the quirks and features he was pointing out were standard in all the Minis. But I read through the comments and someone said there's a hidden compartment in the glove box. So I'm gonna see if I have it. I don't see much so far. Is that the compartment or is it air filter access? <laughs> Neither, it's a fuse box. <laughs> not know that was there. I wonder what they were talking about. Cause there's nothing. There's nothing here. A common restaurant to pick up from is Cheers Bar and Grill here in Concord. I don't know if it's inspired by the one from the show or movie or whatever it was. Cheers, that was the name of it. But this is the first time where I had to wait for the food and it wasn't right there. And out of sympathy, they gave me free cannolis, three of them. They're freaking massive. Nice. Hello, internet. It's time for another Jet Sea exclusive unboxing video. Roll it. Usually I do these with that big thing there, but I recently did a big project with it and I'm sick of it. Mostly I'm mad at myself because I forgot to hit record. A quick story on that, I've been applying for jobs in the videography industry, that's what I have a degree in, and a lot of them require Adobe Premiere. Now all these vlogs that you've seen were in the beginning they were made on iMovie, but for the past several years, probably since 2017 or 2018, they've all been on Final Cut Pro, which is up there with Adobe Premiere. It's easier, more efficient from what I've found. Despite having a degree in videography, film studies technically, I didn't learn anything about Adobe Premiere. I think I used it once in a class and it was so frustrating and it still is. But anyways, I got the program and to practice, I made one of the crazy recipes I got from the cookbook I got for Christmas. I think it was tomato soup cake. I can play a little clip of that video now. Hello there. Today we're gonna be making tomato soup cake from the one and only B. Dylan Hollis. Such cakes that I've made with this book so far were chocolate mayonnaise cake, chocolate sour carrot cake, and it was called election cake. 
add a lot of dried fruits, spices, similar to what we have in this cake. Step one, I'm gonna fire up the oven. You'll get to see my setup. Oven goes up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we begin. Large bowl, we're gonna combine one cup of sugar and two tablespoons of softened butter. I accidentally nuked my butter a little bit too much, so we'll see how we do. I'm gonna do this until it's crumbly. But yeah, I had to do some real good practice with Adobe Premiere. I mean, I'm not posting that video anywhere. It's just for my own personal use. I had the big camera, and then I had a GoPro that was like overlooking the, the cooking area. And then my iPhone on a gimbal tracking me. And for the first half of that video, that was not recording. I never pressed record, so I had to get creative with the audio. But anyways, that's why I don't feel like firing that up again. I'm still mad at it, even though it was my fault. This is just easier. I didn't think I'd do an unboxing video on this anyways, but here I am. So I think it was February of 2020, I came across my old iPad and I charged it and it swelled up like a balloon. And then I shot it with a crossbow. Since then, I bought an iPad 2. It was an iPad 3 that I had, but I bought an iPad 2. I put Flappy Bird on it, which was an app that got discontinued. I was hoping to sell that iPad for a lot of money, but it never happened. And then to keep all the stuff from that iPad that I had before, I had backed it up to a computer and then put on an iPad 4. And that iPad's been sitting in my desk for a long time, and I broke it out for uh, the live stream weather video that I did for Stringer. And it was slow and not compatible with all my other devices. So just the other day, I decided to turn in both of those iPads. I wiped them clean after backing up the main one to my computer. And I went to Best Buy, tried to trade them in. They said they weren't worth anything. So I went to an Eco ATM and I was able to get five bucks for both of them because they're just so old, I think 10 years old or something. And that's an eternity in technological times. So I turned them both in and then I bought an iPad 7. This is it. Seventh generation, back in 2019 is when it was released, I believe. It's much lighter, bigger screen. Uh, it's got the fingerprint button, which I missed with my iPhone. It only has the face scan and it doesn't work with my sunglasses because the infrared rays just bounce off. So it's been nice having a thumbprint scan again. So instead of just having it here willy-nilly, because I actually care about it, eventually I'll upgrade to the latest one. Just do that over time preferably after I get a real job. So I got a case for it. That's what's in here. Now the first ever case I had for my iPad besides the little magnet floppy cover from Apple was a Zugu case. Z-U-G-U-E. I had a couple iPhone cases from them as well. And so when I did research on a good case for the iPad 7, this came up first. Zugu. I don't know if it's the same company or not. The logo's pretty different, I think. It says the Muse case there, and I remember, I think that was like the sub name of the case I originally had. Ooh, look at that, fancy certificate. Making a case for it since 2010. Yeah, so it could very well have been the same company. Signed by the founder and CEO of the company. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> Why do they make it so fancy? I don't even want to open it now. Just pretend it's Christmas morning. There it is, leather, possibly pleather, plastic leather case. It's got a little spot for an Apple Pencil. This is the first generation iPad that's compatible with Apple Pencil, but I have no intention on doing that anytime soon. Very similar setup to the original case I had. I'm pretty sure I've thrown that case away, but it felt folded out like this, except it was Velcro instead of magnets like this is here. Yeah, that comes down. And just stick that out and boom, look at that. Ooh, it's got ventilation in the back. A little triangle looks like a stealth bomber. And this was inside it with two silica packets. Om nom nom. Don't do that at home, kids. Silica will kill you. Let's try it on. Apparently, you can hang it on any magnetic fridge. Interesting. This whole back must be like a magnet receiver or something. What I want to do is get rid of all fingerprints. Consult my bag of microfiber cloth. <laughs> Look at all that microfiber cloth. It never ends. Do just a little bit around the edges where the case hugs the tablet and pop it in. A 
Ooh, nice crunchy sounds. Not in a bad way. Let's see if it automatically turns on when I open it. It does. Turn off when I close it. Damn, I got this thing built like Fort Knox. You can't even peek in it. If I open it fast enough, I can see the screen turned off. Perfect. And there we have it. Very nice. I haven't rated one of these unboxing things in a while. 10 out of 10 would recommend. I don't know. I haven't had a practical use for it yet. <laughs>